What up, everybody? Greetings. I was trying to lower the sensitivity on my mouse, but I don't know why this button is now doing this. But it's funny. <laughs> so whatever. Anyway. Welcome back, Outlanders. We have Sunder. We have Keening. I wonder if Vivek has anything to say about that. Probably just something snarky, like, well, what are you doing here? But I want to read these two notes that we got. The Battle of Red Mountain and Narivar at Red Mountain. Let's first read the Battle of Red Mountain. And the rise and fall of the Tribunal. Ah, uh, for this reading. Got some nice hot tea. Ah. <sighs> The following is a transcript of the words of Lord Vivek addressed to a dissident priest, Malur Omain, who confronted Vivek with the Ashlander traditions surrounding the Battle of Red Mountain and with prophecies of the Nervarine, and to unnamed magistrates of the Inquisition who joined Vivek in interrogating the dissident priest. Okay, so... What, what the hell did I say? I feel like that was a lot of words, but they were unnecessary. Transcript of Vivek addressed to a distant priest who confronted Vivek with the Ashlander traditions running battle with prophecies in the Inquisition who joined what the hell? Vivek? What? I still don't understand what the hell this is saying. It's the transcript of the words of Lord Vivek as addressed to a distant priest about the battle of the Ashlander traditions. Oh well, yeah, let's fucking read it. I'm trying I'm sick of trying to wrap my head around that paragraph. Who can clearly recall the events of the distant past? But you have asked me to tell you in my own words the events surrounding the Battle of Red Mountain, the birth of the Tribunal, and the prophecies of a Nerevar reborn. Here is what I can tell you. Okay, so this is in Vervex words. I got that part. When the Chimer first abandoned the herds and tents of their nomadic ancestors and built the first great house, houses, we loved the Daedra and worshipped them as gods. But our brethren, the Dweemer scorned the Daedra and mocked our foolish rituals, and preferred instead their gods of reason and logic. So the Chimer and the Dwimmer were always at bitter war, until the Nords came and invaded Resdane. Only then did the Chimer and Dwimmer put away their strife and join together to cast out the invaders. The first the, the War of the First Council? Could this be the beginning of the War of the First Council? Once the Nords were d driven out, General Nerevar of the Chimer and General Dumek of the Dwimer, who had come to love and respect one another, resolved to make peace between their peoples. In that time, I was but a junior counselor to Nerevar and Nerevar's queen, Almalexia, Ooh. and his other favored counselor, Sothasil. Ah, so Vivek was the underdog. Always doubted that such a peace might long survive, given the bitter disputes between Chimer and Dwimmer, but by negotiation and compromise, Nerevar and Dumak somehow managed to preserve a fragile peace. Damn, that's hot. Whew. But when Degoth Ur, Lord of House Degoth... Oh, wait a minute, what... Wasn't his name at this time Lord Vorin Degoth? Whatever, continue. And trusted as a friend by both Nervar and the Dwimmer, brought us proof that High Engineer Kagranak of the Dwimmer had discovered the heart of Lorcan, and that he had learned how to tap into its powers, and was building a new god. A mockery of Chimer faith, and a fearsome weapon, we all urged Nervar to make war on the dwarves, and to destroy this threat to Chimer beliefs and security. Nervar was troubled. He went to Dumak and asked if what Degoth Ur said was true, but Kagranak took great offense and asked whom Nerevar thought he was, that he might presume to judge the affairs of the Dwimmer. Okay. Okay, so this all makes sense. This is we've all heard this before, but in greater detail with Dumak and all all this, and they're actually building new, the second Numidium or whatever. Nerevar was further troubled and made pilgrimage to Holomayan, the sacred temple of Azura. And Azura confirmed that all that Degoth Ur said was indeed true, and that the creation of a new god of the Dwemer should be prevented at all costs. When Nerevar came back and told us what the goddess had said, 
we felt our judgments confirmed, and again counseled him to war, chiding Nerevar for his naive trust in friendship, and reminding him of his duty to protect the faith and security of the Chimer against the impiety and dangerous ambitions of the Dwemer. That's definitely a typo. Then Nerevar went back to Vardenfell one last time, hoping that negotiations and compromise might once again preserve the peace. But this time, the friends Nerevar and Dumek quarreled bitterly, and as a result, the Chimer and Dwemer went to war. The Dwemer were all were well defended by their fortress at Red Mountain. But Nerevar's cunning drew most of Dumak's armies out into the field and pinned them there, while Nerevar, Degath Ur, and a small group of companions could make their way into the Heart Chamber by secret means. There, Nerevar, the Chimer King, met Dumak, the Dwarf King, and they both collapsed from grievous wounds and draining magics. With Dumak fallen and threatened by Degath Ur and others, Kagranak turned his tools upon the Heart and Nerevar said he saw Kagranek and all his Dwemer companions at once disappear from the world. In that instant, Dwemer everywhere disappeared without a trace. But Kagranek's tools remained, and Degath Ur seized them, and he carried them to Nerevar, saying, That fool Kagranek has destroyed his own people with these things. We should destroy them right away, lest they fall into the wrong hands. I don't believe what I'm hearing. I don't believe what I'm reading. But Nerevar was resolved to confer with his queen and his generals, who had foreseen that this war would come, and whose counsel he would not ignore again. I will ask the tribunal what we shall do with them. For they have had wisdom in the past that I had not. Stay here, loyal Dagoth Ur, until I return. So Nerevar told Dagoth Ur to protect the tools. Excuse me and the <laughs> heart chamber until he returned. Well, excuse me there. I'm gonna spit down the wrong tube. Gotta hate when that happens. <clears throat> All right. Then Nerevar was carried to us where we waited on the slopes of the mountain and he told us all that had transpired underneath it. What Nerevar had said was that the Dwimmer had used special tools to turn their people into immortals, and that the Heart of Lorcan held wondrous powers. Only later did we hear from others present that Dagoth Ur had thought the Dwimmer destroyed, not made immortal, and no one knows for sure what really happened there. What do you mean, no one knows for sure? It's, it just said, Nerevar saw them disappear. Right? Nerevar said he saw Kagranek and all his dreamer companions at once disappear, according to Vivek, who wrote this. Or these are in the words of Vivek, as transcribed by someone. Where were we? Right... Yeah, right here. No one knows what happened for... After hearing Nerevar, we gave our counsel as he requested, proposing we should preserve these tools in trust for the welfare of the Chimer people. And who knows, perhaps the Dwemer were not gone forever, but merely transported to some distant realm, from which they may someday return to threaten our security once again. Therefore, we need to keep these tools, to study them and their principles, so that we may be safe in future generations. Sounds like foolish excuse to me. And though Nerevar voiced his grave misgivings, he was willing to be ruled by our council under one condition, that we all together should swear a solemn oath upon Azura that the tools would never be used in the profane manner that the Dwemer had intended. We all readily agreed and swore solemn oaths at Nerevar's dictation. So then, we went with Nerevar back into Red Mountain and met with Dagoth Ur. Dagoth Ur refused to deliver the tools to us, saying that they were dangerous and we could not touch them. Degath Ur seemed to be irrational, insisting that only he could be trusted with them. And then we guessed that he had somehow been affected by his handling of the tools. But now, I feel sure that he had privately learned the powers of the tools and had, in some confused way, decided he must have them for himself. Then, 
Nerevar and our guard resorted to force to secure the tools. Somehow, Degeth Ur and his retainers escaped, but we gained the tools and delivered them to Sothasil for study and safekeeping. Alright. How many fucking times did it say the tools in that paragraph? Five? Six? Seven? Come on, guys. Don't you know how to write something without repeating the same literal phrase or word over and over again? I'm, a nit I'm nitpicking the writing. I know, I know. I'm sorry. For some years, we kept the oaths we swore to Azura with Nerevar. But during that time, in secret, Sothasil must have studied the tools and divined their mysteries. And at last, he came to us with a vision of a new world of peace, with justice and honor for nobles and health and prosperity for the commoners, with the tribunal as immortal patrons and guides. And dedicating ourselves to this vision of a better world, we made a pilgrimage to Red Mountain and transformed ourselves with the power of Kagranak's tools. And no sooner than we had completed our rituals and begun to discover our newfound powers, the Daedra Lord Azura appeared and cursed us for our forsworn oaths. By her powers of prophecy, she assured us that her champion Nerevar, true to his oath, would return to punish us for our perfidy, and to make sure such profane knowledge might never again be used to mock and defy the will of the gods. But Sothasil said to her, The old gods are cruel and arbitrary, and distant from the hopes and fears of Myr. Your age is past. We are the new gods, born of the flesh, and wise and caring of the needs of our people. Spare us your threats and chiding, inconstant spirit. We are bold and fresh, and will not fear you. And then, in that moment, all Chimer were changed into Dunmer, and our skins turned ashen, and our eyes into fire. Of course, we only knew at that time that this had happened to us, but Azura said, this is not my act, but yours. You have chosen your fate, and the fate of your people. And all the Dunmer shall share your fate, from now to the end of time. You think yourselves gods, but you are blind, and all is darkness. And Azura left us alone, in darkness, and we were all afraid. But we put on brave faces, and went forth from Red Mountain, to build the new world of our dreams. And the new world we shaped was glorious and generous, and the worship of the Dunmer fervent and grateful. The Dunmer were at first afraid of their new faces, but Sothasil spoke to them, saying that it was not a curse but a blessing, a sign of their changed natures, and sign of the special favor they might enjoy as new myrrh. No longer barbarians trembling before ghosts and spirits, but civilized myrrh, speaking directly to their immortal friends and patrons, the three faces of the tribunal. And we were all inspired by Sothasil's speech and vision, and took heart. And over time, we crafted the customs and institutions of a just and honorable society, and the land of Resdain knew millennia of peace, equity, and prosperity, unknown to other savage races. But... Beneath Red Mountain, Degeth Ur had survived, and even as the light of our bold new world shined ever more brightly, beneath Red Mountain, the darkness gathered, a darkness that was close kin to the bright light that Sothasil coaxed from the heart of Lorcan with the tools of Kagranak. As the darkness grew, we fought it, and crafted walls to confine it, but we never could destroy it, for the source of the darkness was the same source as the source of our own divine inspiration. And in these latter days of Morrowind, reduced to a subjugated province of the Western Empire, as the glory of the temple fades and the dark tide rises from the mountain, we are reminded of Azura and her promised champion's return. We have waited blind and in darkness, mere shadows, Drained of our ardent vision, in shame of our folly, in fear of our judgment, and in hope of our deliverance. We do not know if the outlander claiming to fulfill the prophecies of the Nerevarine is our old companion Nerevar reborn, or a pawn of the Emperor, 
or a cat's paw of Azura, or some simple twist of fate. But we insist you adhere to temple doctrine and conform to the structures dividing the hierographa from the apographa, and that you not speak that which must not be spoken openly. Act as a dutiful priest should, in accordance with your vows of obedience to the canons and arch canons, and all will be forgiven. Defy me, and you will know what it is to stand against a god. Love Vivek. <laughs> Thanks, Vivek. Lovely note, by the way. What the fuck? That was a journey. Well, I'm gonna need a second after that one. Shit, that was a doozy. Damn, all right. Ooh, hot damn. Battle of Red Mountain. Holy smokes. So the way Vivek tells it. <sighs> it's rather cut and dry, if you ask me. I don't believe a word of it. Well, let's see what this one's got to say. Nerevar at Red Mountain. The following is from the Apographa, the hidden writings of the Tribunal Temple. It is a scholarly retelling of a tradition transmuted, transmitted through the Ashlanders concerning the battle at Red Mountain and subsequent events. The Ashlanders associate this tale with the telling of Alandro Sol, a shield companion of Nerevar, who came to live among the Ashlanders after the death of Nerevar and during the ascension of the Tribunal. There are many variant treatments of this story, but the primary elements are consistent throughout the tradition. The murder of Nerevar, the tragic fate of Dagoth Ur, and the profane source of the Tribunal's divine power are denied by Temple Doctrine as ignorant Ashlander superstition and not widely known among civilized Dunmer. Jeez, that's just the intro. Alright. Resdane. Present-day Morrowind was contested ground between two very different types of Myrrh, the Chimer, who worshipped Daedra, and the Dwemer, who worshipped a profane and secret power. These two people warred with each other constantly until their lands were invaded by a young, vibrant, and violent alien culture, the Nords. Two heroes, one from the Chimer and one from the Dwemer, Indoril Nerevar and Dumak Dwarf Orc, made peace between their people and together ousted the alien invaders. Then these two heroes worked long and hard to maintain that peace thereafter. Though their counselors thought it could not last, or worse, that it shouldn't. Nerevar's queen and his generals, Almalexia Sothasil Vivek, told him to claim all Resdane for his own. But Nerevar would not listen, for he remembered his friendship with Dumak. There would be only peace. Until Dagoth Ur arrived, how as Dagoth had discovered the source of the profane and secret power of the Dwemer, the legendary heart of Lorcan, which Dumak's people had used to make themselves immortal and beyond the measure of the gods. In fact, one of their high priests, Kagernak, was building a new god so that the Dwemer could claim Resdane for their own. The tribunal urged Nerevar again to make war on the dwarves. Nerevar was troubled. He went to Dumek, his friend of old, and asked if what Dagoth Ur said was true. But Kagranak and the high priest of the Dwemer had kept their new god secret from their king. And Dumak said the Dwemer were innocent of any wrongdoing. Nerevar was troubled again and made pilgrimage to Halamayan, the sacred temple of Azura, who confirmed that all that Dagoth Ur said was indeed true, and that the new god of the Dwemer should be destroyed for the safety of not only Resdane, but for the whole world. When Nerevar went back and told his tribunal what the old goddess had said, his queen and generals felt themselves proved a right and again counseled him to war. There were reasons that the Dwemer had and Chimer had hated each other forever. Finally, Nerevar, angered that his friend Dumak would lie to him, went back to Vardenfell, this time 
The Chimer King has, was arrayed in arms and armor and had hosts around him, and he spoke harshly to du Dumak, Dwarf Orc, King of Red Mountain. You must give up your worship of the heart of Lorcan, or I shall forget our friendship and the deeds that were accomplished in its name. And Dumak, who still knew nothing of Kagranak's new god, but proud and protective as ever of his people, said, We shall not relinquish that which has been our way for years beyond reckoning. Just at this, the Chimer will not relinquish their ties to the lords and ladies of oblivion. And to come at my door in this way, arrayed in arms and armor, and with your hosts around you, tells me you have already forgotten your friendship. Stand down, my sweet Nerevar, or I shall swear by the fifteen and one golden tones, I shall kill you and all your people. And so the Chimer and Dwemer went to war. The Dwemer were well defended by the fortress at Red Mountain, but the bravery and cleverness of Nerevar's queen and generals drew most of Dumag's armies out into the field and kept them there, so that Nerevar and Degoth Ur could make their way into the heart chamber by secret means. There, Nerevar met Dumak, the Dwarf King, and they both fell from grievous wounds. Degath Ur slew Kagranak and took the tools the Dwemer used to tap the power of the heart. He went to his dying Lord Nerevar and asked him what to do with them. Nerevar summoned Azura again, and she showed them how to use the tools to separate the power of the heart from the Dwemer people. And on the fields, the tribunal and their armies watched as the Dwemer turned into dust all around them as their stolen immortality was taken away. Back in Red Mountain, Nerevar told Degath Ur to protect the tools and the heart chamber until he returned. Degath Ur said, but shouldn't we destroy these tools at once so that they might never be used for evil again? But Nerevar was confused by his wounds and his sorrow for he still loved Dumak and the Dwemer people, and so went to the fields outside of Red Mountain to confer with his queen and his generals, who had foreseen that this war would come and whose counsel he would not ignore again. I will ask the tribunal what we shall do with them, for they have had the wisdom in the past that I had not. Stay here, Lord Degath Ur, until I return. Then Nerevar told his queen and generals all that had transpired underneath the mountain, and how the Dwemer had used special tools to turn their people into immortals, and of the wondrous power of the heart of Lorcan. The tribunal decided that the Chimer should learn how to use this power so that Nerevar might claim Resdain and the world for their people. Nerevar did not expect nor want this, so he asked his queen and generals to help him summon Azura yet again for her guidance. But the tribunal had become as greedy as Kagranak upon hearing of the power of the heart, and they coveted it. They made ritual, as if to summon Azura as Nerevar wanted, but Alma Alexia used poison candles, Sothasil used poison robes, and Vivek used poisoned invocations. Nerevar was murdered. Then, Azura came forth anyway and cursed the tribunal for their foul deeds. She told them that she would use her powers over dusk and dawn to make sure Nerevar would come back and make things right once again. But the tribunal laughed at her and said that soon they would be gods themselves and that the Chimer people would forget their old ways of worship. And Azura knew this would be true and that it would take a long time before her power might bring Nerevar back. What you have done here today is foul beyond measure, and you will grow to regret it. For the lives of gods are not what mortals think, and matters that weigh only years to mortals weigh on gods forever. And so, that they might know forever their wicked deeds, Azura changed the Chimer into Dunmer, and their skin turned ashen and their eyes into fire. Let this mark remind you 
of your true selves who, like ghouls, fed upon the nobility, heroism, and trust of their king. And then, the tribunal went into Red Mountain and met with Degath Ur. Degath Ur saw what had been done, for his skin had been changed as well, and he tried to avenge the death of Nerevar, but to no avail. He was driven off and thought dead. The tribunal found the tools he had been guarding and, through study of Kagranak's methods, turned themselves into gods. Thousands of years after, the year after their apotheosis, the tribunal are still the gods of Morrowind, and the old ways of worship are remembered only by few, and the murder of Nerevar, known to even fewer. But his queen and general still fear his return, for the words of Azura linger long, and they see the mark of her curse on their people every day. I don't know what to say to this. I am just stunned. They murdered Nerevar. I know they did. But we will talk with Degath Ur. He is the missing link here. He may be mad, but he knows what happened. He knows what happened. And Vivek will have to answer for his treacheries. All Malexia will answer for her treacheries. Sothasil will answer for his treacheries too. And all three of the tribunal shall fall. But so too shall Degath Ur. I pity him. Once a trusted loyal friend. Driven madness. Driven mad by powers beyond our reach, beyond what we should grasp at. A victim of fate and the conspirations of foul tribunal. In their greed and their covet covetousness. Ah. <sighs> They have brought Morrowind to darkness. All of them, together, transpired. <sighs> it's time for us to go, friends. And set this right. It's time to light the torch once again. And carry the light into the mountain. To sever the heart. And shatter its power. To sever the link. Between the heart of Lorcan. The tribunal and Degath Ur to release Morrowind and its people from this curse once again and begin a new era for the people of Morrowind. Next time, friends, join me for the final battle. The final confrontation. As we approach Degath Ur.